College football week three pick them. Chris, we have got some fun games on the slate. Good gracious. We're, we're going to go through several of them. Not going to spend a ton of time because, of course, these are our quick picks. For everybody that is paying attention, you can always go and check out our other picks, our official plays, all that good stuff over on the SBR College Football Show and the Bet US College Football Show. The links are in the description. Go ahead and check those things out. Uh, Chris, let's start off with Coastal Carolina, a 14-point favorite on the road at Buffalo. Now, I, I got to tell you, my line on this was 9. <laughs> it has ballooned up to 14. I think it opened at 10 or 11, and it has jumped all the way out there. Uh, people not very impressed with how Buffalo looked against Nebraska. I, If I got to take a side, I'm going to take Buffalo because I feel like it's too many points. Uh, they're playing at home. They played from behind a lot. Kyle Van Treese threw like 50 times against Nebraska. That is not in their wheelhouse. I think they have a shot to at least keep this thing close. My favorite play on it would probably be the over 57 and a half. But because we are playing against the spread, because we're doing pick them against the spread, I'm going to take uh, Buffalo plus the 14. So I, I don't like this number at all. It's, it, it's real, real big, and, and it's something that scares me. But I think, I think I'm going to go the other way. I think Coastal Carolina – I'm using this terrible logic, okay? I'm using search, <laughs> circular reasoning. I think Coastal is better than Nebraska, and Nebraska beat the hell out of Buffalo. Buffalo's going home. Buffalo will probably play better. But will they play 15 points better? I don't think so. I think the defense for Coastal is better than the defense for Nebraska. I think if Buffalo struggled to score against Nebraska, I think they're going to struggle to score in this game. So, I don't know. I, I'm going with Coastal. I'll take the shot. I, I, can, I can understand that. Obviously – it's a big number. I don't yeah. like it, but that's, you, you and I, that's just my thought. You and I both the big fans of Jamie Chadwell and what he's building there. But, yeah, it's a really big number. But who knows exactly what Buffalo is? Are they the team that destroyed Wagner or the team that got destroyed by Nebraska? Like, at, both that's of right. those seemed plausible at the beginning of the season, whether or not Leipold was there or not. So, uh, who knows? Who knows? But Maurice Lingus, you know, this is this is his time to shine. So, we'll, we'll see. Purdue at Notre Dame. And Notre Dame is a seven-point favorite. Purdue's running back is out for an extended amount of time here. Uh, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference because as much as Jeff Brom has talked about wanting to reestablish the running game, he has not done it. They have thrown the ball uh, at an ex- what is it? Uh, extraordinary rate. I was going to say exorbitant. That's it. But they, I just... I don't know if I can trust Notre Dame right now. <laughs> like they didn't look good against Toledo. They didn't look good against Florida State. Uh, I don't know that Florida State's a very good football team, as we just saw. It's tough for me to lay seven here. My my line was actually Notre Dame minus nine here, so I'm going to ride with it. I'm going to I'm going to take Notre Dame to kind of get back right. I think they'll be able to overpower Purdue here. I don't think Purdue has any kind of an advantage at the line of scrimmage. And, and I think that Purdue is actually worse than Florida State and Toledo. So give me Notre Dame minus seven here. Yeah, we're, we're kind of thinking the same round a little bit on this one. Here's what I love. Notre Dame looked look bad against two teams that they should be substantially better than, but they came out with a win. Brian Kelly is a good coach. I think they're going to be better this week than they were the first two weeks. With that being said, Here's how Brian Kelly is going to beat up and this Notre Dame offense is going to – I think they're going to dictate the pace of game. I think Jeff Brown wants to play fast. I think he wants to throw the ball a lot. You talked about that. I think Notre Dame is going to grind the hell out of this game. I think their defensive front is going to get a lot of pressure. They want to slow this thing down. They're going to protect big plays, make everything go underneath. But when they have the football, the best player on the field is going to be the running back, and he is going to – grind out yards. They're going to pound Purdue in the mouth. I think that's going to be the kind of game they're going to slow this thing down. They're going to take every second off the play clock. And 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 I think they're going to physically wear down Purdue. By the fourth quarter, this game's probably going to be tight, just like Toledo. Because I don't know if this, Purdue, uh, this Notre Dame team's great. But by the time you get to the fourth quarter, Notre Dame should be able to pull away. They're the bigger, stronger, more physical football team and this is just what they do. This seems like it could be a game where where Williams finally breaks out, right? He has not looked great uh, running the football in the first two games. This could be his breakout game. Florida State heading to Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons a four-and-a-half-point favorite. 
That line has jumped all over the place. It opened at three, I believe, and jumped up to six and a half on the first day and has come back down. It's now down to four and a half. It, this is, you know, do we get a dead cap bounce from Florida State? That's basically the question here because they did not look good, even regardless of losing the game. Even if they had beaten Jacksonville State 17 to 14, that's still not great. You know, they look good against Notre Dame. We don't know how good Notre Dame is. I, I don't know what to make of this Florida State team. The play call that they ran at the end of the Jacksonville State game, or at least that, that Mike Norvell said that they ran, is not what they actually ran. So Mike Norvell didn't even know what they were running at the end of the game. It's I, I don't know what to make of this team. I don't know if they have lost the locker room at this point. I don't know what to make of the defensive staff. I, I made this line... Wake Forest minus three to start out with. So I had no play early because it, it opened at three. But, man, I I really think that I'm going to take Wake Forest here minus the four and a half. I think I trust Dave Clawson and the more consistent team over the more volatile team, even if they are the less talented team. I like Sam Hartman. I like what they're doing. I mean, they're averaging, I think, like eight yards a play right now. I, I'll take Dave Clawson. Give me, give me Wake minus four and a half. So it's been a lot of years making fun of the ACC because they've basically been Clemson and trash, okay? And, and that's the truth. This year is very different. I think Clemson is worse than Clemson may have been in the last, I don't know, seven years. But I think the rest of the conference is getting pretty good, okay? I think this Wake Forest team can be good. I like Boston College. I Well, I liked them before quarterback went out. I like I like NC State, even though they lost this year's state. I like I like like the middle level of this conference a lot better than I have. I think Wake Forest is, is, is a lot better than they've been in the past. And I think they're overall just a better team than, than Florida State right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I really think so. I, I am worried that this could be a disastrous kind of season for Florida State. It, when, you get, when you get in a hole with your offensive line, it takes years to build back out of that thing. You can't just get in transfers and all that. When you have completely mismanaged it over three different coaching staffs now, there's almost no way to fix it. So I'm I'm curious what's going to happen here, but you know, you like me, we're gonna we're gonna both ride Wake Forest minus the four and a half. SMU travels to Ruston, Louisiana, to take on Louisiana Tech. SMU a 12 point favorite. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my line had SMU minus 16. I think SMU, they did not look great against North Texas in their last game. I get that. However, this is a fantastic stable of wide receivers, a good quarterback in Tanner Mordecai. I think SMU's defense is actually pretty damn good, and Louisiana Tech kind of showed last week against an FCS team, they are not as good as what they looked like against Mississippi State. They took advantage of a lot of turnovers in that first game against the Bulldogs. I... I don't think Louisiana Tech is that good. I'm getting this under two touchdowns. Uh, give me SMU minus 12. I really think Sun Dykes is going to score a lot of points here. Yeah, I'm taking this is the fourth favorite I've taken in a row, which, you know, that just grinds my crawl real bad. But I, 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 don't, I don't think La Tech is a good football team. I didn't think they were before the season started. I, I'm not changing my opinion. What SMU does is fun. Sonny Dykes is a hell of a coach. And, and he's going to have those guys ready. I think this offense is going to cook. And to, to, to beat somebody by two touchdowns, and that's not a number that scares me when I think they're substantially better than the, the opponent across the field. Now, I will say there are crazy things that happen in Ruston, Louisiana. I don't think this is going to be one of them, though. So I, I have seen teams go in there. Well, and, hell, I mean, we can yeah. lose this bet. I mean, shit, we lose bets all the time. It happens. No, you, I mean, you're not wrong. You, know, you are it's not a, wrong. It's a road team catching a, two touchdowns. Exactly. So, yeah. We could lose it, no problem. But I, 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 if I have to put my money one way or the other, I'm putting my money on Sunny Dice. You got that right. You got that right. Ball State heads to Laramie, Wyoming to face off against the Cowboys. Cowboys are a seven-point favorite. I would not have imagined this. Although, you know, I do have a lot of love for what Craig Bowl is doing over there. And I, I think that Wyoming is the better football team here. Going to be uh, a lot of wins, by the way. At Plitt, the quarterback for Ball State, is going to have some issues throwing the ball around because they're expecting 15 to 25 mile an hour wins in Laramie. I, I am kind of all over Wyoming here, but my line had it set at Wyoming minus four. I, I 
they gave up a lot of points to Northern Illinois. If those wins, if something changes with the weather report, I could totally see Ball State hanging in here. I'm going to take the dog here. I'm going to take Ball State plus the seven because I think that it's going to be a tighter game than a touchdown. Yeah, I like Ball State. I think they're a good team. They won the MAC last year. I think they're really good this year. I think they're going to be contention for the MAC two years in a row. You, you, you're talking about the win, and you're talking about it like that's their only offense. This team can run the football as well, okay? And they're pretty good defensively. That didn't look like it against Penn State, but Jesus, Penn State's substantially stronger than them. You just you just can't do anything with those big ass offensive line or a big ass defensive lineman over there at Penn State. Like you, you can't score on that team, and you can't run on that team. I think they'll be able to run on Wyoming. I think they'll be able to move the ball even if the uh, the wind is kicking up. Listen, that wind's going to hurt both teams, all right? You no longer can take your deep shots because of the wind. But the, the no wind is so damn strong that you can't you can't shoot, you know, slant passes and, and throw these out routes and stuff to, to still spread the defense out and get them on their heels. Yeah, yeah, I think you might be right. So you're, you're riding Ball State as well. Yes, sir. I can get down with it. Utah heads to San Diego State. They are going on the road again, and they're a nine-point favorite, which is exactly where I set the line initially. You know, they opened as a seven-point favorite. Been a lot of love with a bounce back from Utah. San Diego State is feisty. They are really good. They whipped the absolute hell out of, out of Arizona last week. Total is 44 and a half, by the way. So you're looking at having to beat somebody by double digits with a score that will remain in the 40s. And normally, that kind of thing doesn't happen. Uh, Brady Hoke and that that Aztecs defense kind of, you know, or, well, not the defense, but the offense is really picking up a lot of pace here lately. They are really getting after it on offense. I, I didn't like what I saw out of Utah last week. They look discombobulated. They look confused a little bit. They made some major mistakes that you don't normally see them make, and they did it on the road, and now you're on the road again. I I don't know if this is a get-right game for Utah. This feels like it might be too many points. San Diego State, 6-2 and two straight up against the Pac-12 uh, in their last eight, and that's they're not even against the spread. That's just straight up. I, I kind of like San Diego State here. I'm not going to take a money line on it, but I will, I will certainly take nine points. So, yeah, I, I, we see this game very similar as well. I picked this game in, in my SBR show. I did the breakdown, and my breakdown was exactly what you said. That if you think a game is going to be played in the 40s, nine points is a hell of a lot of points to give a head start to a team to a game that's going to be played in the 40s. That means you're going to kick the shit out of them. That means it won't be close, okay? If San Diego State scores at all, you're either getting way over the 40s or you ain't close to your nine, all right? And, and that's the issue. I think it's too many points. I think this this, this ain't some punk-ass Mountain West team like San Diego State's been in the past, okay? San, San Diego, this Aztec team is tough, all right? They play real good defense. The, all you talked about, their offense is getting better. I, I like this team. Had it, it, My only reason for not having a money line play on this is I can't see Utah losing two games in a row to teams that Utah is better than. Because there's no question Utah is – Utah has more talent and is better than BYU. Utah has more talent and is better than San Diego State. I cannot imagine a world where they lose two games back-to-back straight up. But I absolutely can see them not just saying, we have to get a win here. We don't need to kick the shit out of somebody. We need to play smart. I think offensively, they're going to become a shell of themselves. I think they're going to stop taking chances. I think they're going to try and, and, and not go vanilla but not make mistakes, which means if we get out of here with a field goal win, we're the happiest guys in, in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, I think they will focus a lot more on the running game. And and I, I don't think that they will be playing from behind. Of course, you never know what's going to happen in these games, but South Carolina heads to Athens, Georgia to take on the Bulldogs. This line sits currently 31 and a half in favor of the Bulldogs. Uh, they have not given up a single offensive touchdown on the year thus far. And I, w- I will go ahead and tell you, my line was actually Georgia minus 23. But this 30, this 31 and a half does look enticing because when I initially set the line, I kind of forgot about the fact that Will Muschamp is now an on-field assistant and, and he and Kirby have been buddies for a long time. This could be one of those spots where they start tacking on touchdowns late. If they have the opportunity, of course, maybe they tack on a few more touchdowns just because 
South Carolina fired Will Muschamp. Now, I don't know that there's any kind of animosity like that, but it does make me a bit... I'm not as confident in taking South Carolina as I initially was because I don't know that South Carolina can score on this defense. I, I'm i going to roll with my line. I'm going to say South Carolina keeps this within 30, but, I mean, who knows? So give, give me the dog to at least cover the 31 and a half. You think J.C. Daniels plays in this game? It doesn't affect my, my pick at all, by the way. No, I don't think they need him. I, why, I, why would you? Your offense yeah. looked amazing last week. This game shouldn't be any different than that week. Listen, you don't you don't make spread thirty one and a half when you play FCS opponents. Okay, this, this this line this is just too much. This is gross exaggeration. This is a storyline. I love it how coaches are absolute dog shit. Okay, they're the ones that lose. They're the ones that are bad, and then somehow they're going to play their old team that fired them, and they got an axe to grind. What? the <laughs> We, who's grinding axes here, baby? If Will didn't suck, then Will wouldn't have gotten fired. That's okay? true. That's like, true. Like, can somebody explain that mental gymnastics that these guys do? I would like somebody to try and sit on a couch and explain to me how you think you're a victim of something. And it's okay now for you to justify running up the score on your old boss who absolutely justifiably fired you. You know? Like, that's... <laughs> That's, I, I just don't get that part of the story at all. But you're 100% right. That's there. And I bet Will thinks that because these guys are all narcissists. They're all complete and utter sociopaths. And, and they think they're always in the right and the people are wrong. Neither here nor there doesn't matter. 31, like I said, you don't, you don't make the lines against FCS teams that big. Shane Beamer, he's feeling himself out. I would think that that Georgia gives up their first touchdown. I don't know how, but but come on, man, this game's not going to be close. One team is trying to get bowl eligible, and the other team's trying to win a national championship. Okay, that, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I expect a lot of running clock. I expect a lot from the ground game. I don't think Georgia's going to come out like they did last week, throwing the ball all over the yard, 50 yards down the field. And even if they do, South Carolina's got a better defense than UAB does, at, at least as far as talent goes. They actually have guys that can match up. So, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, 31 and a half, just too I'll many t- I, will t- I will tell you this. If they start running it up, it would not surprise me. The South Carolina team has nothing to play for this year. you got a couple of seniors out there that don't like Georgia. You start running it up and you're playing for a national title, We'll take some guys out, baby, because if we get a headhunting, you know, penalty and we get suspended for it, who gives a shit? We're out of here, and this team's no good anyway. But if we take one of your guys to the moor, baby, that's just you. You now have a loss because you're playing for something. I uh, I don't know if I would have taken it that far, but I do appreciate the fact that you did. <laughs> but hang on now, I love the realism. If you're getting if you're getting run up, I'm just putting yourself in the in the mental aptitude of a 22-year-old senior at South Carolina who has one big, unbelievable, amazing victory against Georgia. His other coach, his old coach, was on the other sideline, and now that coach is trying to run it up on him. And you telling me I wouldn't roll up on some offensive lineman's knee? Hell yeah, I would. Yeah, no, I could I could see it. I could see it. The, the mental and now, gymnastics now you start games. losing a couple of old linemen, and now all of a sudden now you're not playing for a national title anymore. Congratulations, Kirby. <laughs> Hope you're excited. No, I, I think I think there is something to that. There is certainly something to that. You spoke of national titles, so let's go ahead and bring them up. Central Michigan at LSU. LSU minus Jeez, 19 right. and a half is where it sits. I actually, You're a dick. You know that? You're a dick. <laughs> You're a fucking dick. I, they, they won a title two years ago. Fuck that's a, you. That's, I thought that was a good transition. <laughs> What'd your line have? My line was weeks? LSU minus 17. I will tell you. Too many points. I, you think it's too many points? I don't. I don't. Yeah, think, what's the real line now? What's uh, the real line now? Real line is nineteen and a half. It opened at twenty-one. That's too many points. I think. I think it's. I think I'm going to go LSU here, and and here's That's why. Fine. I think LSU can actually throw the ball a little bit. I think they outclass Central Michigan's secondary big time with their wide receivers, and I don't think that the issue with LSU right now will hurt them in this game, right? Their issue is run blocking and getting stops on on the defensive line. I think the LSU secondary is going to be fine in this game. I think they will be able to man up in this game. 
I don't think that they're going to have a ton of problems running the ball because they're not going to have to. I, I think that they they outclass in, in the back end on offense and defense. Central Michigan, Central Michigan can't run the ball. Like I, I, they should outclass Central Michigan in every aspect of the game. Gary. Well, don't don't forget. Jesus like, Christ. okay, tell me this: is is Missouri a better football team than LSU right now? Yes. Okay, Missouri only beat them by ten. Okay, but uh, well, so what were the first words out of my mouth? We start talking about this game outside of calling you an asshole. Too many points. Too many points. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I just wonder. Like, there's been a lot of hate for LSU this week. I wonder if people are selling them a, a touch too short right now. Like, uh, yeah, I think they'll have problems once they get into SEC play, but I don't think this is going to be one of those games. Like, I just, I, I think that they can. This is one where they can run it up and feel good about themselves before they head to. Are they going to Starkville next week? I think it's Starkville next yep. week. So, yeah, I think I think this is kind of a get right spot. And get your team feeling a little bit better about themselves, and then and then go on from there. But but you you still believe too many points. Well, I, I'm not. If we have to make a pick, Gary, I'm not picking against my team. Okay, I don't do that. Okay, I don't ever do that. All right, All but right, let me, I'm let me telling you, you it's too many points. <laughs> so you can write down LSU in the cover. Okay, but I, but my words are telling everybody in the world: if you bet this game, you're an idiot. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with that. I tend to agree. Our offensive line couldn't move McNeese State. Central Michigan is far better than McNeese State. Okay, that is true. That is true. Well. Yeah, right. yeah. Move, next game. Next game. Let's go. We're done. <laughs> next, done. Okay. next game. I didn't want to talk about it to begin with. I thought you were a dick to put it on there. Go ahead. <laughs> Oklahoma State is heading up to the blue turf to face off against Boise State. Boise, a three and a half point favorite. Total of 57 and a half. Oklahoma State has not looked good, brother. Spencer Sanders might just not be very good at football. Let me let me get you to talk about this one first. What the hell happened to Mike Gundy? <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I, did Juba Hubbard take his soul? No. Did, I, did all the shit that happened last year in the off season just completely discombobulate him and make him so uncomfortable in his own skin? This was a guy that was more comfortable being who he was than anyone I've ever met, and the politics of our world has completely just just taken him balling. He's got no balls, man. Yeah. No, well, I'll tell you this. I, I used think to he love missed Oklahoma State football because they played with balls. Whether they won or whether they lost, they were going out there and they were firing on all cylinders. It was good that they had a cowboy and their name, you know, their little weird saying is guns up because that's what they did. They took shot after shot after shot. And now it, it's not that they don't have talent, they look conservative, Gary. And I don't like that shit. That ain't, that ain't the Mike Gundy I know. I don't care about your politics, baby. I won't own the football field for you to let that shit fly. Through two games, L.D. Brown has 56 yards rushing, Spencer Sanders the leading rusher at 62 yards, and Jalen Warren has 46. Overall, everybody combined, they have got 190 yards rushing on 71 attempts. That's only 2.68 yards per carry. And they ain't good passing the ball either. Uh, Shane Ellingsworth has 315 yards passing. Spencer Sanders, 173. Both of them have thrown a pick. Like, I, I, it's only two games, but their offense does not look good. The defense does look a lot better. Like, now that Jim Knowles is going in, wait, I think he's in his fourth year, the former Duke defensive coordinator that brings a lot of pressure, you know, runs a 3 4, all that kind of stuff. He, I just, my line on this was Boise minus two. I think I undersold Boise a little bit. Like, Boise hasn't been super impressive either outside of like a, a crazy first half where they capitalized on some turnovers against UCF. I think I'm going to take Boise here. I think they're going to be fired up for this game. I do Is not like it. Is it four and a half still? No, it's three and a half. Three and a half. I, look, I bet on Gundy two weeks in a row and I've lost. And I'm so disappointed. You know what? I'm, I'm just a dumb son of a bitch and I can't give the guy up. I'm going Gundy one more time. Because at some point in time, he's going to take these guys out west where he's comfortable. They're going to go out into the prairie and they're going to kick the shit out of somebody. And they're going to drop 40 points this weekend, okay? Because if they don't, I don't know I don't I don't know who this person is that is leading this football team. What what kind of a world we never knew that we, we live in? <laughs> we never knew the names of the quarterbacks he had before until year 2 or 3. It ain't like he needs a special quarterback. 
Okay, this guy is no different than Mike Leach or, or Matt Rolo, uh, Rick Rolovich, or, and, and all these other guys. They they're no different. Okay, just just give me anybody that can throw the football. This is my scheme, and we are going to get guys open. We're going to find space, and we're going to hit them in stride, and that's going to be our run game as well. And we're going to put up points. We might not be able to stop anybody, but we're going to drop forty. You you might be on the right path here. Oklahoma State, their last fifteen games as an underdog. 12 and 3 against the spread. So you might be on to something, but man, I, I will tell you, they, they haven't covered in two of the last three. And oh, it's scary as hell to bet them right now. You, look, yeah. I'm doing it just out of just out of principle, just out of just spite of I gotta believe Gundy is just gonna slap the shit out of somebody this weekend and say, I'm taking over. Give me the give me the headset, give me the playbook, I'm taking over. Okay. Okay, I can get with it. So you are on Oklahoma State. I am on Boise. Moving on, Arizona State heads to Provo to take on BYU. BYU, a three and a half point underdog after winning the Holy War last week. Arizona State, like this line was at, I think, two to open with and and has jumped up. It got up to four. It got bet back down again. It's down to three and a half. Total of 51. Can, can BYU get excited and emotionally up? For a second straight week, I don't think Arizona State has been that good. Jalen Daniels, or Jaden Daniels, I, I just don't know what to make of this team right now. I don't know if it's because of what happened in the off season, but you know they they've been able to stop the run and they've been able to run the ball a little bit. Can't throw, but are they going to be able to stop somebody like BYU because they hadn't played anybody like them yet? I don't know what to make of this. I'm going to have to trust that they put everything they had into that Utah game last week. To, to finally end the streak, I'm going to take Arizona State. I think I think that's the right side. I'm going to trust Herm to go in there and get this thing done, even though it is a whiteout in in Provo. I'm, I'm taking Arizona State, minus three and a half. So, so you hit everything I said in, in my SBR pick as well. It, this, this, is, this is the problem. I don't care how hard you try to do it. You can't manufacture emotion, okay? A- emotion is real, and it's raw, and it's live, Okay. The hatred that they had for Utah and the excitement for finally getting over that hump for the first time in nine years is a big, big deal. It is impossible for those fans to show. You can tell them to wear whatever T-shirt you want, okay? It's impossible for those fans to show up this weekend and be half as excited as they were last weekend, all right? They can be happy. They can be thrilled, but they can't be passionate. They can't. They can't muster that kind of fire and vigor inside them, okay? That just doesn't happen. Now, let's get to the X's and O's of this game. Their defense shut down the run game of Utah. The problem is, is Utah runs the football from a very power perspective. They're bigger than you, they're slow, uh, stronger than you, and they're very plodding, okay? Arizona State ain't going to do that. They're going to beat you with speed and finesse. This is a styles makes fight situation here in my opinion i think arizona state has way too much speed way too much athleticism byu and utah were built way too similarly to where it's just one of those things where the fighter who won this most was going to win and the fighter who won this most won that's not this i don't think the scheming is as good the coaching is as good on byu side as i do at arizona state side and there's not an athlete on the field as good as Dayton daniels I just, I just think he's that good. I think he's special. I don't care what he's done up to now the first two weeks. I'm telling you, this kid is special. I've seen him play too long. I, I can trust it. Hey, by the way, uh, what a difference in fan bases, right? Like one of the country's oh, top well, party yeah. schools going up against yeah. the, against the Mormon bunch at BYU. Uh, it had a lot and of LSU hate. Went up to, but, uh, LSU ahead, went up to Provo a couple a couple years ago, and that was a that was a fun time. We we. That was probably the easiest drink that city dry that LSU's ever had. I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, this lot is of very hate. similar to that. A lot of hate on the uh, on the YouTube comments, by the way, from BYU fans saying that uh, our shtick is old about old men playing for BYU. They were like, they average the same age as any other college and whatnot. It's like, I don't think so. I don't think so. Like y'all can get mad all I, you I, want I'm, to. I'm, I'm almost. I'm almost. I'm almost positive they don't average the same age. As every other college, correct, correct. Hang on, I would like I would like to narrow that down as two starters. Okay, I, they might average the same age because they might have a shitload of eighteen year olds on the team. I don't think those guys are playing. All right. Yeah, I tend to agree. I their, t- their front <laughs> seven, their front seven are twenty four, not eighteen. 
Yeah. Go, go, go look at Alabama's age. Go look at LSU's age. Go look at Georgia's age. Those guys are all 19 years old, all right? They can't, they can't crack a beer, all right? Just because Utah doesn't, doesn't crack a beer doesn't mean that they can't. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. All right, let's close it out. Fresno State heads to the Rose Bowl on Saturday night late. UCLA an 11-point favorite here. UCLA coming off of a bye. We have seen Fresno play really well against Oregon the week before Oregon went to the horseshoe and beat Ohio State. But does that mean anything for this game? The line is 11. My line was actually 18. I trust UCLA in this spot. Look, Chip Kelly is, he said this game is prime time in the Philippines. <laughs> I absolutely yeah. love it. But he He's joking. It, he feels like he's got a pretty good football team. Fresno State is a good team. I think that we are going to see points galore. The total of 63, I think, is way too low. But I, I do believe that UCLA is going to cover this 11. I think they win this by at least two touchdowns, maybe more, because I think they're just the more powerful football team. And, and there's no look-ahead spot for UCLA here. I think this is just UCLA is the better team. They're going to cover this. I, I almost think easy. Did I lose you? No. What did you say? Yeah, my earpods died out for a second. I got them back. <laughs> it's all good. No, I'm taking UCLA you said, minus 11. You, you said almost minus 11. I got that. Yeah, all right. almost Man, easy. I really, really, really want to take Fresno because I think Fresno is a really good team. This man, this Mountain West season has been awesome, by the way. It's a great start. I don't think it's getting any better. I mean, I don't think it's getting any worse. I think it's going to continue to be awesome. Yeah, give, give me Chip. I think Chip is good. I think, I think he's finally got this team rolling. But just just know that this game scares me. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, anytime you got a team that can that can put up points the way Fresno does, it's going to scare you a little bit. But I, I, I trust that the Bruins are on uh, a heck of a run right here. They are owning L.A. I mean, their rival just fired their coach. Like, I think this is a good spot for UCLA. So, yeah, that uh, that is going to wrap up. Pick them. Here's the recap right quick. I am taking Buffalo plus 14, Notre Dame minus 7, Wake minus 4.5, SMU minus 12, Ball State plus 7, San Diego State plus 9, South Carolina plus 31, LSU minus 19.5, Boise minus 3.5, Arizona State minus 3.5, and, and UCLA minus 11. Chris. Rolling with Coastal, minus 14, Notre Dame, minus 7, Wake, minus 4.5, SMU, minus 12, and then we get to the underdogs for Chris. He's taking Ball State, plus 7, San Diego State, plus 9, South Carolina, plus 31.5. Favorite, LSU, minus 19.5, although he told you to stay away from it. Oklahoma State, plus 3.5, and, and then two more favorites to end it out. Arizona State, minus 3.5, UCLA, minus 11. All right, brother, you need to get out of here. Yes, sir. Got to go. Do you what guys. you do. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.